Uh, but we were asking basically what was uh, current, how does anime animation what and anime compare to your on-camera work? And the last we heard ah, from you so was basically top, about yeah. your f first uh, vocal coach. Yeah, my 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 yeah, first actor, right. my first acting coach was uh, Jack Manning, and he he, he, oh. he I was trained in the classic Shakespeare and Molière, and uh, so um, but you know I always try to find something within myself that matches up with the character and try to build from that to you know to to get a basic uh, honesty that 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 uh, pervades the character in his speech, his mannerisms. Now. But obviously, one of the big differences between um, animation and live action is you have to memorize your lines in live action. Now, animation, you memorize a bit, but slightly differently. You have to minimize, mem memorize it on the spot so that you're not stuck to the page when you're trying to match your flaps. So uh, that's something that uh, I think most of the uh, most of the wonderful actors in our world have that ability to. Uh, Memorize very quickly. Of course, we forget it very quickly too. But <laughs> but we memorize it very quickly, so you can you can look at the screen and match the flaps as opposed to uh, to avoid the going up and down as much as possible. Try to avoid that. But uh, but in terms of as an actor, as an artist, bringing uh, telling a story, which is that's what we're doing. We're telling a story. Uh, there's a basic uh, bottom line of the of the. Uh, the integrity of the character, which is, I say, which I try to find something within myself that matches up, and then the, and then it kind of branches out like a tree from that. Really? And of course, there's also I, there's also the, uh, the the area of commercial mm -hmm. acting, which is, you know, that in and of itself something different too, <laughs> because you know you don't have a lot of lines memorized, but there's something else. One of the things anybody out there who's done a commercial, you know, that you you know you do. A, a thousand takes or whatever, something over and over and over again. Uh, like I have a, uh, I have an Orkin commercial that's running now where um, I'm making a cup of coffee and the doorbell rings and I go, I answer the door. When I open the door, there's a giant ant standing there looking at me, and he says, "We brought your couch." Okay. <laughs> of course, he hasn't brought a couch. He's trying to. Yeah, well, he actually did have a couch. His partner was on the lawn holding a couch up with one arm. You know how ants are supposed to be very strong, right? So he's got one leg holding a couch, bouncing it up in the air, and um, and I said, "Couch." That's it. Of course, I had to go in and loop that word. You realize that, of course. Oh, I mean, I I did. I had to. I actually had a session to come in and say, "Couch." Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, the, the, the commercials are a lot of fun, except for the tedious aspect of it, after doing it over and over again. I also have a, um, a, um, a Fidelity Federal commercial that's running now, uh, the Green Line. Uh, it's uh, about your investment uh, considerations, and I'm golfing on a golf course, and so I actually am putting, and I, I make a couple of putts. They didn't have to. They didn't have to cheat it. I make a couple of putts, but it, that wasn't too much in the way of dialogue either. So that was more of a physical thing, but. Um, the uh, acting, each area of the business has its little tweaks, but I think the bottom line in terms of the integrity of the work is pretty solid and pretty uh, pretty common in all of the areas, whether you're an opera singer or if you're, you know, you're doing a Fidelity Federal commercial. Right, I can understand that, and you've had a lot of training to sort of prep yourself up to, you know, get all this experience and to get more jobs and whatnot. Right, yeah, 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 I've had a, had a lot of training. I trained with Dr. Dean Berhines, who was a... Um, uh, coach at the at the Metropolitan Opera, and uh, so I studied with him here, and um, well, for a number of years. But he had he had an idea that he he, he said my voice was a mixture between uh, Paul Paul Robeson and Enrico Caruso, and he had this idea that I was going to have this great operatic career. And I was going to audition. He was on the uh, the judging channel for the Western audition for the Metropolitan Opera. So he said, well, you go and you, you'll win the Westerns, you'll get a scholarship, you go to New York and you, you sing in the chorus at the Met. And then after some years, you become a soloist. And, uh, and, I, and so I told him, I said, yeah, you know, that sounds that sounds like a lot of fun. But, you know, Mick Jagger, I don't think he has any training at all, and he's doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, could, I, mean, I just didn't have it in my mind in my mind that I wanted to spend all of that time to train to be uh, you know, an opera singer, especially since I started kind of leading life. So, uh, but when I, it, it was really cool because when I would go to the lesson, there would be three of us in the room. There would be Maestro, Dr. Dean Behines, myself, and the instrument, which was my voice. 
<laughs> just to give you an idea of how how that that world how they consider the the voice as an as an instrument almost as an entity uh, unto itself. And you must always have to take a very good care of your voice. Do you ever walk away from either a voice acting session or an acting session just like drained and or, or maybe just like ah I can't talk. Yes. <laughs> yes. Especially with my my uh, my 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 voice and the type of characters that uh, you know I'm doing uh, there's the screaming and the growling. Yeah. So that type of thing. And so you do have to take very careful uh, uh, care that you don't you know you don't injure yourself. And that if you have a job today, you want to be able to do a job tomorrow. But sometimes you, it gets out of hand, and then you're you're down for the next day because you overdid it or you did something wrong, um, you know, on a job. So it's very important. I always warm up before, and I actually I warm down afterward. I do a lot of yawning and, and, and humming and um, tongue trills and lip trills and, to, you know, to, to keep the instrument uh, uh, facile so that they could be at my beck and call. <laughs> I always hear that video games are actually the worst in terms of uh, uh, damaging the voice. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, you, 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 because you know the nature of it is you know, you've heard them. You hear, <laughs> and some sometimes you have to, uh, you have to, um, you know, you do a take over and over again. And if it's if it's one of those takes, one of those loops where you do that screaming, it could be kind of rough. And especially if the, if the particular character you're doing has a lot of that. So you loop after loop after loop. If you're doing that growling, then screaming, it's it can be uh, it can be pretty rough. Oof, it sounds like it. And now I'm curious, what uh, project have you been working on recently, or do you have upcoming that you can actually talk about? Uh, actually, yes. Uh, well, something not in the anime world. I'll be on Wizards of Waverly Place Friday night uh, on the Disney Channel. Um, you see, uh, Love Will Keep Us Together. I did. Uh, for the Hallmark Channel with David James Elliott. He was the, the, the male lead in JAG, that TV series, JAG. Uh-huh. Um, so that's going to be airing June 19th, where I played his boss. And, uh, see, I mentioned the, uh, I mentioned the commercials. And, but I do have a project coming up called War of the Worlds. <laughs> I, I don't think you'll find that at any uh, conventions or anime parties I'll be going to. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. Otherwise, the food down there is fabulous. You know, if you get a chance to go down there, you know, have one of those you know, crawfish omelets. Oh, my goodness. About the sweetest eat you can have. I see, now I'm jealous. I'm so hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just after lunch. I figured I'd be safe talking about food. <laughs> I, I'm terrible. I, I don't eat. I eat at random times. But... Uh, it, it, it does sound very fun being able to, you know, see the, the fan reaction and going different places like that. That must be a whole awesome experience. Oh, it, it's just uh, it's just unbelievable to go around the country and to have people, um, as I say, give love to you like that and uh, express appreciation for what you do. Uh, there's nothing better. Because obviously without fans, I, we have no career. You know, we have nothing to do. <laughs> so the wonderful folks out there who are listening, I love you all. <laughs> and I'm sure they love you too. They wouldn't be uh, listening if they didn't. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Well, it's a love fest. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. I, I am curious though. How does the work in animation compare to your on-camera work? Well, um, it's it's similar but yet different. You know, in, in terms of when you're getting into a character, um, you know, there's a certain process you, that I use. People use to have different processes, but. Um, I was trained in the, in the classics by Jack Manning, who was my original, my first acting coach, and actually my only acting coach. And um, so I studied the classics, so I have...